Hey, you know what I've always thought was underappreciated in video games? Tutorials. Yep, that's all the intro you're getting. I uh, didn't really have any ideas for this one. You can, you can cut to the next part now. Sometimes it can be hard to remember just how important a tutorial can be to the player experience, especially for those not accustomed to video games. A tutorial can decide whether a player quits altogether, so first impressions are everything. A good tutorial should be quick and teach you the main mechanics of the game while not overwhelming you with options. Yeah, disregard everything I just said because the Five Nights at Freddy's series barely follows that. FNAF isn't a series about having a billion different ways to do something, it's about the opposite using trial and error to learn the best strategy to get through the nights as they progressively get harder. Because of the nature of the series being all about learning, tutorials serve a very different and important purpose to the gameplay. In an ideal world, a tutorial in the Five Nights at Freddy's series should very basically teach you the mechanics just enough to know what to do while keeping the specifics of everything vague enough to inspire theory crafting. Recently I've been thinking about how each of these games teach you their various mechanics, and I realized how, especially around FNAF 4, how much their quality wavered and that influenced me to make this very video. I'm going to go over each game in the series and discuss whether I think its tutorial succeeds in both teaching enough information and not being bland. I except these two. I'm not talking about Fury's Rage. Does anyone care about this game? FNAF 1's tutorial, with no exaggeration, might be one of the best designed things in the entire series. In fact, it's half of why I wanted to make this video. It started life as a video essay on just this night before expanding it to the full series. So why do I care about this night so much? Well, let's go over it. The game starts with a phone call from a previous security guard who the FNAF fanbase has creatively dubbed Phone Guy. He welcomes us to Freddy's, tells us about weird stuff that should definitely not be said on anybody's first day, and tells us to only close doors if we really need to. Alright, I know I kind of sped past that phone call, especially considering it is technically the entire tutorial and this video is about tutorials, but let's be honest, if you've clicked on this video, you've probably heard it plenty of times. And I think that is truly a sign of how good the first phone call is. Tell me, what other tutorial text can you think of that's as iconic as this original call? Not many. And that's because it's not really a tutorial. The only thing he really says about gameplay in this entire call is telling us to shut doors. Now he does get more direct in future nights, like telling us to use the door lights and watch Foxy on the camera, but for the first night he doesn't really say much. And that's because this night doesn't really have anything that needs to be taught. Throughout the entire phone call, nothing will move. Their AI is literally not active at this point. Once the phone call ends, around 2am, Bonnie can move, but because of his really low level, he moves incredibly slowly. Chica eventually gets added too, but for the first night, this still doesn't matter. In fact, it's not that uncommon to have literally no one show up for the entire night. So why do I consider this night to be so good if it practically plays itself? Go tell that to Markiplier. Yeah, looking at many's first playthroughs, especially back when the game was new, a lot of them are surprisingly close to dying. Some of them even end up losing on this night where you can go take a bathroom break and still win. Why is that? I think it goes back to that original phone call. The lack of any substantial information or direction works completely in its favor. With no guidance other than close doors when they're near, it leads to people panicking, closing doors when they really don't need to, checking cans when the animatronics aren't even active, and that confusion can often lead to them burning through power, running out and dying on the very first night. I know it can be hard to appreciate nowadays, the first Five Nights at Freddy's has been milked to death by YouTubers, so it's rare you find someone who hasn't at least seen a little of it, but if you try to put yourself in the shoes to someone just playing it for the first time, it's easy to see why it worked for so many people. The information given to you actually almost works as a hindrance, scaring you and making you even more worried about threats that rarely even get to you, which not many games can do effectively. So that's the first game, a fairly simplistic yet infinitely effective night that teaches you absolutely nothing in the best way. Let's see how its sequel, FNAF 2, handled its tutorial. After a grueling three months, we finally have our next game in the series, Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Wait, was it really only three months? Oh wow, that's like some Garden of Bam Bam level development time. This game starts in a very familiar way, getting a phone call to start off the night. It's even the same guy talking to us. He tells us pretty much the same thing as last time, talking about the previous guard and how Fazbear's is. I don't know if this is just a me problem, but I do find they spend a lot more time trying to explain why certain mechanics are the way they are. If I had to guess, it's probably due to how outlandish things are starting to get already. In the first game, your defense was two doors. That made sense. Now we have a Freddy mask and a music box, both of which are much less obvious as to why 
they help you, so they need more time to explain it. That's not necessarily a bad thing, it provides for some world building, and I like the more outlandish mechanics, it's just something I noticed. Another thing I've noticed is just how similar this game is to the first. You start with a phone call that goes on until about 2am, which is when some animatronics are activated. Much like the first game, if you get really lucky, you'll never actually encounter any animatronics that require the mask, though you still have to wind the music box, look or not. While this knight is basically a carbon copy of the first one, I actually have a lot more problems with it than you might think. For starters, there's no power in this game except for your flashlight, so already the aspect of panicking and losing all your power isn't really there anymore. I also just think that the mechanics in this game aren't really well made for the whole wait two hours for anything to happen I the music box in this game is the first mechanic that doesn't go with the usual AI level system, instead just being a meter. It's just this awkward circle that kinda sits there, and while it does thankfully label it with text, it can still really confuse new players. I remember my first time playing, I spent a lot of time winding it up when it wasn't moving, simply because I didn't realize it would move. I just assumed I had to keep winding it with no visual indication, and the circle was just kind of there for some reason. It's only after the phone call ends that it starts to go down, but the game also doesn't warn you of this, so some players might not be ready for it and die before they even know what they did wrong. Despite everything I've just said, this isn't a terrible tutorial. Far from it. I still consider it to be great, but I just kind of feel like it copied FNAF 1 and made every aspect like 10% worse. They even mentioned Foxy's mechanic on Night 2. There are way more similarities than you might think. Again, I don't hate this tutorial, I just think the old format doesn't really work here and more care should have gone into making it. Let's not get negative too quickly here though, we have a lot more to go through, starting with FNAF 3. After a whole 4 months this time, we have Five Nights at Freddy's 3, the end of the series. <laughs> because of this, this entry in particular is very secret and lore heavy. It was trying to give the series a satisfying conclusion, and the tutorial reflects this. We get another phone call, this time from a character called Phone Dude. Really creative there, FNAF fan. But unlike the first game, he says nothing about gameplay. At all. He tells us about the attraction that we're working at, but says nothing about how to defend against the threat of Springtrap. And that's because Springtrap isn't here. Yet. Yeah, the first night of this game has literally no threat to you. Not as in the AI is inactive, more so as in Springtrap isn't even in the building. Yeah, remember when I said this game is focused on lore? I feel like this tutorial is an unfortunate byproduct of that. And notice I do say unfortunate, as from here on out I have a lot more bad things to say about these tutorials. For starters, this game has some complicated enemies or more so enemy. Springtrap is one of the most random and confusing AIs in the series, and is the only real hard part about FNAF 3. Learning where he will go, how to block and lure him, and using your time effectively to reset your system is the most important part of the game. You do not get this aspect in the tutorial. Springtrap isn't in the building for the entire first night, so you can't really learn anything about the game. Sure, you can use the audio and camera systems, as well as reset things, which can teach you those mechanics, but all that knowledge is kind of void without the threat to make it work. Even when Springtrap is added, the phone calls say nothing about it, just more about Springlock suits. And all of this is not to mention the other threats in the game, the Phantoms. Sure, most of them are pretty self-explanatory, like Balloon Boy, but then there's ones like Phantom Freddy, which I still don't know how to avoid. Can you even avoid him? I don't even know. I'm sure during all of this, a few FNAF fans have been yelling at their screens about how I'm wrong. See, FNAF 3, more than any other, is all about learning how things work. Learning how you can bait Springtrap and deal with your increasingly useless systems. So, maybe no direction is actually a good thing? If that's what the game is about, then why am I complaining about it? Well, let me ask you this. Why does this night exist then? Why am I wasting six minutes of my time in an empty room where I can't learn anything? And don't you dare say the story, you could very easily have him in from night one and the plot would be unchanged. If the game is all about trial and error, then why have me learn anything at all? I actually feel like the first few games structure could have worked well here. Most people, especially by the third game, usually mess around during phone calls anyway, so have him come in whenever the call ends so that we still have a minute or two to learn our systems while not wasting an extra four minutes of our time. I'm not sure exactly how he would enter at this time, just have him like break down a wall or something, that'd be funny. As for the phantoms? Honestly, please just delete Phantom Freddy, he's the only one that doesn't make sense, he's killed me too many times, please. In context of the learning nature of this game, I guess it's 
fine. It's just a bit of a waste of time, even for new players. I'm at least glad it's something different. If there's one thing I can say about this tutorial, it's that it's at least more memorable than 2's. As much as I tried to be nice to it, it is way too similar to FNAF 1's for my taste. Fun fact, looking at the word counts of both of my FNAF 1 and 2 segments, they're only 5 words apart. In fact, it was literally the exact same until a last minute edit. It just goes to show how similar they are to each other. Still, ignoring its memorability, it has way too many aspects to be improved for me to call it anything above alright. Don't worry, I'm sure it'll pick up at some point. I mean, we have like 7 games left. If it doesn't get better than this, then I'll just be sad. Let's move on to FNAF 4. <sighs> well, I knew this time would come. FNAF 4's tutorial sucks so much. It's just some text. That's it. A text box or two. If you've been paying attention, you'll realize just how lame this is. Going from a phone call every night to a simple text box is incredibly disappointing, and is another one of the reasons I wanted to make this video. As annoyed by this as I am, looking at it under an analytical eye, it sort of makes sense. This game is all about sound. If you go up to a door and hear breathing, you need to close the door. This mechanic is alright, I've never really cared for it because I hate jump scares being so loud, but it's an alright basis for a game. An unintended result of this, unfortunately, is how the tutorial can teach you. First off, you're in a bedroom alone. Getting a phone call in here would feel out of place, and there's not really many other ways you could do it without it feeling off. Even if there was a creative workaround, this game is much more rigid than the others. If you walk up to a door and hear breathing, close it. Otherwise, don't. And the other two don't add too much to this besides another item on your checklist. Again, this is not a bad thing, I actually like the approach a lot, but it means that if you teach the breathing, you teach the game. And you can't just not teach the breathing, otherwise everyone would have to use a walkthrough. So in a way, this is the only option they really had? Doesn't mean I like it. Even though the game was kind of forced to do this, I still infinitely prefer the old way, and I hope the next game goes back to it. Sister Location. Yeah, you're gonna notice the segments get shorter from here on out. I mean, what else is there to talk about? Fun with plush trap? It's just more text. Alright, next game. There's not a tutorial here. It just kind of throws you into the game. It's just an RPG. It doesn't really need one. Why is this in my script? Hey guys, look! It's the worst FNAF game! Let's all point and laugh! In all seriousness, for as boring as this game is, its tutorials are luckily a return to form. Notice I say tutorials plural, as this game has many different gameplay segments. Luckily for me, most of them don't have too much to go over, so I don't have to talk about each one individually. They all follow a pretty similar format, a very brief and simple instruction given by Hand Unit or Baby. Most of these minigames are incredibly simple, so they don't really need an in-depth explanation. Usually a sentence or two is enough. I want to particularly highlight Funtime Foxy's minigame. I think what Hand Unit says feels really natural and teaches the player in a really direct way, but the minigame is so confusing it almost requires trial and error by the player. It reminds me of what I loved about that original game's phone call, though this one is a bit more direct with your direction so it's closer to FNAF 2. Interestingly, there are actually four minigames, at least from what I can remember, that have no instructions whatsoever. The weird 8-bit Circus Baby minigame, the Biddy Bab section, the entirety of Night 4, and Entered Secret Night. I'm going to really quickly go over each of them since I feel there's more to say when the game does nothing rather than when it does. The 8-bit Circus Baby minigame is a rare event that can happen when you die, and requires you to feed a cupcake to every child. There are multiple different types of cupcakes, and each one has a different shot type, and you have to perfectly plan your shots with each type or else you'll run out. While I do have some issues with this minigame, most of them don't really have to do with how it teaches you, it's mostly just a puzzle so there's not much to teach. One thing I do wish it would teach is how each cupcake works. The only way to know that the blue cupcake shoots three or the green cupcake goes in a line through others is by shooting them, and new players will fail at least once or twice just learning how each one works. Like FNAF 4, there's not too much that could have been done, I actually think some text could help here, but as it is now, it'll most likely already take a few attempts to figure out the puzzle anyway, so not teaching in this case is excusable. The next minigame is the Biddy Bab section. The next cutscene is the Biddy Bab section. Yeah, this minigame just requires you to hold your mouse over a door. There's not much to teach here. Night 4 of this game lives in absolute infamy for being one of the hardest nights in the entire series. For those who don't know, it's actually only one minigame where you're stuck inside of a suit and have to fend off all the mini arenas while keeping all the spring locks wound up. While most of the challenge comes from how strict it is, another difficult aspect of it that I often see new players struggle with is just how confusing it is your first time through. Despite how many mini arenas there are, you actually only need to worry about the ones climbing up your suit, and you only need to worry about them when they're near the top. This is not explained to the player though, and Instead, most players will likely die a few times trying to shake off enemies that aren't a problem. 
This might sound familiar to FNAF 1's first night, where its lack of direction led to panic, which led to death, so in theory I should like this for the same reasons. The difference though, is that while this turns an incredibly easy night into a confusing mess, this one just confuses players on an already absurd night. If your challenge is already hard, then I would prefer you be more direct with it. Confusing people only works if their confusion is one of the few threats to them, otherwise it just feels like being a jerk. Like I already have enough going on, the least you could do is explain it a bit. I can't even be nice in saying explaining would get rid of the challenge of figuring it out, since knowing what to do is not the hard part of it, just an annoying aspect. Moving on to our final section with no tutorial, we have Ennard's Night, which in theory I like. It's very reminiscent of the classic FNAF formula, unlike most of this game, so explaining not much works well. Or it would, if it wasn't for one issue. The checkpoint system. If you fail, you don't go back to the start of it. You go back to basically the start of the entire night. You have to walk through this auditorium, enter this number combo, which is actually surprisingly hard because of how small the buttons are, listen to Circus Baby talk some more, walk through this dark area, and go to the right, all just for one more try at it. This heavily discourages experimentation, as every time you fail, you have to wait like two minutes to try again. This isn't the lack of tutorial's fault, but it and the checkpoint system combined means that 99% of players will probably just look up a walkthrough so they can get it over with. Honestly, I'm just kind of mixed on this night in general. It's probably the best and worst night in the entire series. I know I just spent like 3 minutes going over the sections that don't have tutorials, which is a bit counterintuitive, but I think it's interesting which minigames they thought needed instruction and which ones they thought didn't. Like you're really gonna give me a tutorial for the Ballora minigame, which is basically just red light green light, but not night 4? Still, despite most of what I talked about being negative, this game still teaches you well overall. There's just not a lot to talk about in regards to what they do right. I have noticed something strange being just how short and direct they all are, though that's mostly a result of how simple and basic every minigame is, so I won't hold that against its tutorials. I'm glad to see a semi-return to form after the mid-tutorial of FNAF 4. Let's see how they handle the tutorials in the next game. Five Nights at Freddy's Pizzeria Simulator Definitely the most different game in the series yet. This game is unique in the fact that it has three different gameplay segments throughout it. The Tycoon section, where you buy items to improve your pizzeria and play minigames. The Office section, where you have to finish all of your tasks for the next day. And the Salvage section, where you perform tests on the animatronics while shocking them to make sure they can't get up and like slowly walk up to you. Unlike Sister Location, I actually am going to go over each of these tutorials, since honestly, this game might have the best in the series. Yes, even better than FNAF 1's. Let's go over each of them in order, starting with the salvage section. Sort of. After a fake out troll game intro, we get sat face to face with Scrap Baby. This section is almost entirely scripted, and for once, I actually think this works. We get explained the basics of the minigame, to check off papers and shock the animatronics when we feel like they're getting too active. The one thing that tutorial doesn't tell us is probably the most important part, that being how we know they're getting too active. And yeah, that's all it really has to do. You only have three shocks, which doesn't matter here since you can't die in this intro, but in the four other salvage sections it matters a lot. Deciding whether you need to shock them or not in order to save on resources works really well here and makes it a very fun challenge. Another aspect I love is that, despite me saying you only have three shocks, you don't really. You can actually shock them as many times as you want, but after the third shock you start to lose money that you would have gotten for salvaging them which adds a whole new layer to it. Do you risk lasting another stage in order to get more money, or shock them a few extra times to stay safe? After all, if you do get jump scared, you lose all the money you would get anyway, so it might be worth it to keep going. All of that is up to the player to decide, and all of it stems from not telling us when to shock them. Imagine how much lamer this section would be if it said, make sure to shock lefty when his head faces slightly down, or when you hear that whirring noise, otherwise you will lose. It just doesn't feel the same. Moving on to the tycoon section, luckily this won't take nearly as long. There's not much instruction given to you, which is fine because it's mostly self-explanatory. It does explain a few things to you, like how to place items and stuff, which sounds boring, but works entirely due to how it's presented. If it was just text, yeah, that would be lame, but it's told to us by a Freddy Fazbear's representative, and it's entirely carried by the delivery. I honestly think Andy Field just has a great voice for this role. Congratulations, you went somewhere you weren't supposed to go, saw something you weren't supposed to see, and prevented a tidy resolution to a messy problem. Needless to say, you're fired. Now get out. And that's really all for this phase. Like I guess there's the minigames, but they just have a single line of text, which works for their simple nature. 
Moving on to the office section, we get more instruction from Henry, who also gave us the salvage instructions. He does a great job making it more tense than it actually is, especially considering how at this point you probably don't even have any animatronics in the building. I guess that's kind of what makes this tutorial so hard to judge. Depending on how you play the game, you can have anywhere from 4 to no animatronics in any given night. A big part of this phase is slowly understanding what each animatronic does, and how many tasks you can get away with without looking away. And if you go into the first or second night with all four active, you likely aren't going to be prepared. That being said, I don't hold this against the game in any way, as it tells you that animatronics can get in if you buy markdown items. So if you get stuck in that situation, it's kind of on you. And that's it for this game. Despite all being very simple, I think this game might have the best overall tutorials yet seen in the FNAF franchise. Everything about them works incredibly well for me. As much as I could talk about these more, we still have three games to go over, so it's probably best to move on now. Let's see how UCN handles things. This game definitely has the strangest tutorials so far. Due to the nature of the game, you know, just being a big custom night with a lot of animatronics, they go over each of the animatronic mechanics when you choose them for your night. In any other game, this would be incredibly lame, but because of how many there are, it makes sense. They obviously couldn't have like a 3 hour phone call or anything like that. There are a few secret characters who actually don't get a tutorial, which I'm not a huge fan of. There are some that have pretty complicated mechanics, and those that don't you would only really know by playing previous games. Like tell me, if you didn't play Sister Location's Custom Night, would you know to type LOL when this appears, or do this very specific button input on console, or... Wait, how do you do it on mobile? Oh. You just tap three times. That's kinda lame. I spent like five minutes trying to find this information. Most of the time though, it's not too bad, it just takes a few tries and walkthroughs to get used to. But yeah, that's really it for this game. Sort of boring, but perfectly fitting for it. Let's move on to FNAF VR. <coughs> Alright, we've got another FNAF world here. By that I mean I won't be spending long here. Help Wanted is basically a glorified collection, so most of the game's tutorials I've already talked about in other segments, and the new mini games don't really have tutorials. Sorry to have such an underwhelming penultimate, but let's just move on to our final game, Security Breach. Alright, I've been too positive in this video, and I think it's time to change that. Security Breach's tutorial is another low point in the series, maybe even worse than FNAF 4's. Most of the things they don't teach you, which given how ungodly simple this game is, that makes sense, but when they do give you a tutorial, it's just text. You get a little pop-up anytime you get something they feel is important, which is not only boring, but what they decide is important is so confusing to me. Like, I don't need a pop-up every single time I get a security badge. There's like 10 of them, I think I get the point. They also lack tutorials in things that really should have them. In the game you can pick up things like sodas in order to increase certain stats. Which ones? That's a great question because the game never tells us. Sure, some of them make enough sense, like a lot of them just say things like flashlight upgrade, that's easy to know. But then there's things like three different types of soda, where apparently they all do the same thing, but they're different variants, so how am I supposed to know that? Or things like the hoodie, like what would that even upgrade? I'm pretty sure it increases your stealth or something, but a hoodie doesn't convey that. All of this could be fixed if they just added a tiny amount of text saying what it is when you pick it up. And the worst part, like I said, it's just a pop-up. While I was willing to give FNAF 4 a pass for it kind of being the only option, this is unacceptable. We're in a mall and spend most of our time with Glamrock Freddy, a character who would have been perfect for this. Instead of having a pop-up appear saying, Freddy is out of power, you can't use him until the next hour. Just have him tell us this. He already basically does. <sighs> so yeah, that's Security Breach. Don't like it. I've wasted enough of my energy on this, let's just get to the outro. So, despite my little outburst in the end there, tutorials in this series have a better track record than I thought. A lot of them, specifically one pizzeria simulator and parts of sister location, are actually really clever and subtle. Here's what my overall graph of the series looks like, and it's surprisingly more varied than I thought it would be, only really dipping in Security Breach. I don't have too much faith for the Security Breach DLC ruin in terms of its tutorial. I imagine it's going to be more of the same, but I can dream. I know a lot of this video was just summarizing a series which I'm sure you're all familiar with, but I hope I've gotten you to think a little more about it, as it's a really interesting topic in general. Until next time, I'll be- until next time, I'll be- <laughs> How did I mess that up twice? Until next time, I hope you guys have a good day, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Yeah, no, last second joke this time. Sorry, I couldn't think of anything.